Welcome to Dare to Dream. This is Debbie Dashinger, and today's show features the amazing Kelly Boker, who channels physical and non-physical beings from all dimensions, realms, timelines, and incarnations. She will be channeling later on in the show. This is again the Dare to Dream podcast with Debbie Dashinger, and this show has won the COV Award for Best Radio Podcast Show. Welp Magazine lists Dare to Dream as one of the top 20 best podcasts to listen to. It is a high-ranking self-improvement show on Apple Podcasts and nominated for two People's Choice Podcast Awards and for a Webby Award. This show is sponsored by Dr. Dane here and Access Consciousness to learn more about the amazing work they do facilitating out in the world, go to Dr. Dane, H-E-E-R dot com. I'm Debbie Dashinger. I am a media visibility expert. I'm a book writing coach. So I teach spiritual messengers how to get the idea out of their head onto paper and published. I also take books to a guaranteed international bestselling status. I do all the heavy lifting for the author and I guarantee results. And finally, I show you how to get booked on radio and podcasts. I teach you the entire system of how to do that. And what's so beautiful about it, it's also how to get results. So for the time you invest on being interviewed, you can start building up your tribe, your database, your followers, fill your workshops, and more. Everybody who's taken the class has done so, so well, and you can too. I'd like to start you out with a free gift so you can learn how to get more visible for your business, your being, and your message. Go to debbiedashinger.com slash gift. It's D-E-B-B-I-D-A-C-H-I-N-G-E-R.com slash gift. My guest today, Kelly Boker's transformative journey blends her diverse professional background, 23 years of nurturing and educating future caregivers in the CNA program with her innate spiritual calling. In 2022, during her final year of teaching, Kelly embarked on a profound path, channeling her guides and delving into spirituality in a way that brought realms to offer solace and connection. Her book, Redefining Faith, captures her evolution from wounded to awakened, a testament to her guide's unwavering support. Now, Kelly shares her insights through one-on-one sessions and group gatherings, both in person and remotely, offering channeled readings, spiritual mentoring, and light language blessings. You can contact Kelly on Facebook at Kelly Newt, N-U-T-E, Boker, B-O-W-K-E-R, or book an appointment with her at presentmomentmagic.as.me. You can explore Kelly's books on Amazon, charting a course to self-discovery and embracing life's mysteries. And with that, I welcome Kelly warmly to the Dare to Dream show. Oh, it's so great to have you. It is wonderful to be here, Debbie. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah, this was so meant to be, and I'm so psyched that strangely you're here. I... We kind of both know the journey of, of how you got here, and I feel like I was guided, you were guided, and um, yeah, and that's how we connected, and even how the guides opened a space for you on the show. They did. So I can always count on them. (laughs) Always count on them. Yeah, we were talking in the beginning about the little nudges we get. And Mm. it's pretty profound. People call it their gut feeling, their intuition, the nudges, the winks. It's all the same thing. And clearly, your journey has had a lot of that in it. So I'm curious, because in your bio, it says you went from wounded to awaken. Oh, those are very powerful polar words. Yeah. Can you talk about the woundedness? And what was the bridge that got you over to awakened? I think that I would describe the wounded aspect of myself as that part of me that was programmed as a young person into the beliefs of partly the Baptist religion, 
Um, I'm not saying anything against any organized religion, but for me, it didn't resonate. So it always created within myself a conflict, an incredible amount of guilt. Mm -hmm. I felt less than, not good enough. I never was going to be a good enough. I felt such an incredible love for God. And at the time, you know, I used the language I understood, God and Jesus and the Holy Spirit. And I felt that connection. And I lived my life. I've lived a pretty happy life. And, but I say that, you know, we talk about the nudges, our, our team gives us the tap, gives us the this, and then you get the two before if you don't listen. And, and in my late fifties, the two before was starting to come out with me, just not, certainly not as hard a big of a two before as a lot of people end up with, but, um, enough for me. I, I got to a place of just feeling like I didn't know who I was not feeling fulfilled as a woman. I had, I'm blessed to be in a very happy at that time around 39, 40 year marriage. Now it's 42. And I just wasn't feeling okay. And when I told my husband that his first thought was it had to do with us, but it didn't, it had to do with me. It had to do with me finding my authentic self. And so um, I got to a point of being so not okay in my own skin, not okay in my life. Um, mm -hmm. And I knew I needed to do something. So I started some counseling. And when I did that counseling, it wasn't a lot. It was only for about three or four months every other week. But in there somewhere at the end of one of our sessions, she looked at me and she said, Kelly, I think I've missed an important thing about you. It is, you need to look up what it means to be an empath. And when I looked up what that meant, that is the cork out of the genie's bottle and the rest, as they say, is here history. And that's less than two years ago. So that's so interesting. I would consider myself an empath too, but I don't have the gifts you do. So when you get this big aha about being an empath, then what starts happening? Do the guides start talking to you? Do you start spontaneously channeling? What, what is the occurrence? So I had been meditating for about five years because of the different taps that the guides had given me. I started to have some illness. I started to have some anxiety, different things that I'd never experienced in my life. So I'm a very grab things and get things figured out kind of gal. And so I dove into the internet and I learned how to meditate and I started to embrace that side. So when you say, you know, they were definitely nudging me now, looking back, I really get it. But mm. at the time you didn't, you know, like I'd be walking down the hallway to go to meditate and I just would get this just impulse, you know, this, and it would be, they would just say, meditate with the lights off, meditate with the lights on sit up, lay down, earphones in. Each day there would be something different. And they they were they were guiding me. They were training me to be able to hear them. Mm -hmm. Now looking back, I get it. I really understand that. Um and when the thing about I really probably other than taking one quiz online about being an empath and I think it was something like 35 questions and it said that if you had 15 yeses out of 35 you were an empath and I think I had 32 <laughs> yeses and so it was like but that was just like a leapfrog place I it allowed me to finally say yes to the metaphysical side of the world and let go for once and for all of the dogma, fears, and beliefs. I mean, you got to realize it was, you know, people who channeled according to, and people would still say that from the religious sect, that I'm, I'm doing stuff for the devil, that I'm evil, that I'm channeling demons. You know, I mean, they would, they would think I was possessed. And so I had to really get over that fear. Mm -hmm. And I really, really can say that my guides and my team was so kind and so gentle as they brought me along they would I would they just they just nurtured me and brought me along a little bit at a time so as I when I dove into that side of the internet I found out about mediumship and at the time I found out about evidential mediumship 
And that was so much of a blessing for me and such a big stepping stone. I don't know what that me. word means, evidential. Evidential mediumship. It's mediumship that the medium is able to bring through concrete, irrefutable evidence. Like I brought through the name Fred for a woman and she, her nickname had been Fred all of her life. Wow. Things like that. I mean, it's evidence. It's true evidence. And and now that that's not a part of my journey anymore. And, and that's a whole different story. But but that evidential mediumship piece is so important. It allows us to once and for all let go of that left brain egoic idea of I need it. I need proof. I need to know. Well, if I can tell you that you put a loaf of bread in the freezer this morning, and yes, you did, that's pretty good evidence. You know, there, those kinds of things, you know, I'm the, 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 it's always kind of odd, but it, it's irrefutable. And, and it does take away the doubt. And I needed that. And, and I found lots of, of examples of that. And that was, took away the last bit of armor around my heart and around my soul and it let me just open up and you mentioned this incredibly happy marriage and I know you've got a family and etc exponential how did they receive all of this change in you do they mm. embrace with the work you're doing right now it is a challenge in some ways because my husband and I have basically been glued at the hip for 42 years. And if he had his wish, I would sit beside him on the couch watching Gunsmoke every <laughs> minute that he is there. Now, if he's out working or doing something, that's okay. But if he has free time, he wants me to have free time. And so that's hard for him because I have to follow this dream. And I have, I, I don't know what it's going to hold. People will say to me, you know, like, do you want to do this? Do you want to do that? I don't know until the guides tell me if they drop it into my lap and they give me a nudge in one direction or the other, just, I just today had that kind of experience. I mean, then, you know, yep, this is the way I'm supposed to go. And, and I just follow that. And I know that is the path to joy. But when I told Michael, my, I began to channel in January. And in the next, the following March, just a couple months later, I did my very first mediumship reading and brought through evidence. So that was, because I can tell your, all of your listeners that the, when you begin this journey, or at least I did, you really question your sanity. You know, you really wonder, am I making this stuff up? Am I, am I crazy? What does crazy look like? You know, I mean, you really do wonder. And, um, but when I brought through the evidence in the mediumship reading, that was proof for me too. It was just black and white stuff. There's just no way I could have made up or grasped that or known. And when I got home from work that day after, and I'd done the reading, I, Mike and I were having cocktail hour and he started to put music on. And I, cause we typically listen to music at night. I said, sweetheart, we need to talk, which for all of you, you know, men just love it when you say you need to talk. So I, but I did. And I explained what had happened. I asked him, you know, if he understood what a medium was and I explained it a little bit. And I don't think I've ever loved him more than when he got tears in his eyes, when I said, I can't not do this. And he looked at me and he said, of course you can't. They've chosen you. And when he said that, I truly, I don't think I've ever loved him any more than that moment. I love and him right now too, by the way. I think that is so oh. extraordinary and rare and beautifully yeah. supportive. So oh. Michael, I hope you're feeling the love right <laughs> now from all of us. <laughs> Kudos to you. And clearly, right, soul contract, you were both chosen for each other. And somewhere oh. in his soul contract, he knew his highest soul over soul knew there would come a time when he would need to show up for you. So bravo that he is fulfilling that. That's so extraordinary. And tell us what comes through you. Cause we, you've made it clear. You don't do the mediumship anymore. Not and it anymore. sounds to me based on your story, like that actually was perfect that you did it 
That was a piece of your journey you needed. So you stopped the, am I crazy? Kind of <laughs> talk yep. going on and that you were able to shift with the proof into, oh my goodness, this is for real. Don't know where it's coming from, but this is happening. So, so now we're here. Now we know you channel, you do light language blessings, which I love. And who comes through you and what is that experience like? Mm. Oh, it's glorious, quite frankly. Um... Okay, I'm going to back up just a snidge and say that, so I did my first mediumship reading in March, the following June is when light language came through. And I feel that when light language came through for the first time, it, there was an unlocking, there was a, a, the channeling that I had brought through up to that point had a much more familiar feel when I, when I say that I mean like that energy that when I would connect to the Holy Spirit and I would say my prayers and I would feel that love that's what the, it felt very familiar and but when light language came through it's like they plugged me into 220 <laughs> and all of a sudden things were changing quickly that was when the evidence piece started to ebb away because I was hung up on it, the left brain, the ego, I've got to do it right. I can't, I, if, you, if that's what it is to be a medium, I have to be able to bring through the evidence. I have to, I have to. But my guides kept saying, it will come if it's needed. It will come if it's needed. But it just felt so glitchy because I didn't realize that not every medium isn't a channel. I've never been to a medium. And I didn't realize that, that I, because it came so naturally, the very first time that I did a mediumship reading, I channeled the woman's father. He came through and spoke and it was a convoluted back and forth because I didn't understand all the vibes that were coming through, but I didn't realize that wasn't the way it was for everybody. When I sit down and someone says, I want to hear from dad, I feel a push behind my face. They want to talk. It's a blending. Wow. So to answer your question, Debbie, I bring through the all, we are all one. Mm. So whatever the question is, I reach, as you introduced me, across dimensions, timelines, incarnations, and realms, I reach, I set my intention for love and light, for the highest and the greatest that I can be a channel for, and the energy just comes. And I, my jaw will start to shiver. And it will shiver varying amounts according to what entity is coming through. But to get specific, I would say I channel physical and non-physical earth beings. No, not physical earth beings, non-physical. So people that have passed away, there's no question that if I'm channeling for you, loved ones that have passed away out of your life are part of that. Because they love you and they want, they're interested in you and they've, they've got an opening. So they're going to be sending through. So you would be able to ask, dad, you know, did you suffer at the end of your life? And he would be able to come through and talk to you about that experience. But what he, but what I'm done trying to do is holding dad back and say, dad, tell me something Debbie's done today. It's going to prove to her that this is really you. I'm not, I'm, that's the piece I'm done with. But does he come through? Absolutely. Do I bring through angels and entities from other dimensions, entities, both physical and non-physical? This is where the physical part comes. They, I had a being come through me one day and they said, there are both physical and non-physical beings. The physical beings in other dimensions, in other planetary realms, with, this is how they worded it, with their technology and their intellect can, through benevolence, mm -hmm. interact and assist humans, people on planet Earth. Isn't that cool? So cool. So, so cool. Yummy. This is so yummy. Yeah. <laughs> Yay, thank you. Yeah. I like being yummy. <laughs> this is my jam right here. Wow. Mm -hmm. And I love the fact, you know, that you could, that my parent 
who passed, for instance, might show up, but in a different way, without the whole proof situation, but just be part of the conversation to disseminate something that's important. Right. Um, what a great right. gift you have. What oh, a great gift. It so such a, such a gift. Yeah. And Kelly, <clears throat> I definitely want to give people an experience of this aspect you're discussing. Would mm -hmm. you be willing to channel for us right now? Is this I would love to. I would love to. And is it fairly fast? Um, are you quiet? Just how would I, how will I know? I typically, if it's okay with you, I would just start with a couple of breaths and, and some light language. Okay. And, and I would say to your listeners mm -hmm. that when light language comes through, it brings with it frequencies and codes that can, I invite you to just have the idea that it can go within you and change you to whatever degree that you need. It can help release. It can change and open up knowings that you just, trust me, this is my life. All <laughs> of a sudden, it's like, I'll be like, well, okay, I guess I know that now. And that's light language. Light language brings the frequencies that, that ignite within us our remembering of who we are and who we are is God. We are one. We are one with every being, every living being, conscious being, we are one. And we just have to remember our way back to it. So I'll just bring through a little light language and I just invite you to say yes in your heart, open up your heart and every cell. Take a breath in and create some space for the magic to happen. Yes, dear ones within your hearts. And we would take questions. Thank you. This is Debbie, and I'm delighted to have you here. And may I first ask, who, with whom am I speaking or with what? The energy that comes through Kelly is a frequency and a collective that comes through to match the question and the need of the moment. It is a blending of all. It is humans who like to be able to pigeonhole but it is a beautiful blending of many, many realms and dimensions and beings. We would say certainly Pleiadian, Arcturian, many, many more that Kelly do, does not even know the words to describe. She has been a very receptive mm, vessel for us as we have come through though she had her fears and we had a pre-agreement around how much fear and nervousness she could tolerate because she is a gentle soul and she has done remarkably well over a short period of time with the ideas of the aliens that are indeed part of her team. But yes, dear one, you are talking to all at your disposal. Ask your question, and that will bring the more specific through. Beautiful. Thank you so much. And should something or someone come forward that wants to be identified, I welcome that too, my new friend. So I would like to start with asking you about contracts, because we touched on that in our conversation. So are there 
details about pre-birth contracts, how they are, why they're here. How do we even know if we had a soul contract with somebody before we came here? Wonderful question, dear one. It is a, a very multifaceted question and, and so, of course, a multifaceted answer. When the soul decides to incarnate, there is, we show this one a big table. This is just for her to make sense of it. And they, there is a gathering of different souls who, and also guidance and loving hmm, caregivers of the unfolding, we would say, giving guidance as to what plans get laid into place. There is often a determination on the part of a particular soul that perhaps has, excuse me, come to an incarnation, not necessarily earthly, but many incarnations with much gathering of growth and knowledge and beingness to come back to their oversoul with. Those can souls tend to be a bit pushy, shall we say, because though the guidance will often be there that will say you're maybe are biting off a bit more than you will want to chew, sometimes they jump in head first. And so agreements are made. And when those agreements are made, often there are big we would describe them like road signs along the journey. The happenings are the road sign, the event. And there are many such things that are predetermined and laid out for the individual down on the uh, physical plane, be it wherever it is particularly in the earth plane. When the individual gets to their first sign, their first event, they have an opportunity. They have an opportunity to awaken, an opportunity to remember who they are. If they do that, these subsequent happenings fall away. They are not needed any longer for the person's evolution. The happenings are for the evolution. There is, however, pre-agreements of such that an individual out of love and kindness and care and compassion will choose a very difficult beginning or a difficult timeline mm. that has the likelihood to cause such disturbance within them that they know it is very likely that they will in some way, it is not a yes, no, you're definitely doing this or that, but it is likely that they will be in a vibrational frequency that would allow them to cause harm. And that is out of love, that that entity lowers its vibration to such a level as to allow them to be so separate from them, their higher self that they are able to be the perpetrator in what humans would call horrific events. Those things are pre decided. Again, we say this one over here does have the opportunity to awaken within this lifetime. 
It isn't as likely, but it is absolutely possible. And this one over here will experience as many of those experiences as are needed for the eyes to be opened and the remembering to happen. Does that answer your question, dear one? Perfect. It does. Um, I have two follow-up questions based on that. And the first one is, how do you recognize that you're in a partnership, a romantic partnership mm -hmm. or a deep friendship? Um, I suppose family as well, but I want to re reserve the family piece <laughs> for the second question. But how do you recognize that oh, this is a soul contract I have with this person? This is something we're meant to be together. We're meant to walk this walk together, you know, do this journey. There's something special different unique there because i've experienced that not often but at times in my life i have had that connection i had it recently i did a six month shamanic class and i definitely have a very unique connection with a woman who doesn't even live in this country she lives in australia but we become in insanely close and caring and and it feels like there's something special there i certainly feel that with my beloved and so I'm just curious, is it just like you get lucky sometimes with people or is it uh, that there really is something there and how would you recognize that? You used the term perfectly. You felt the connection. And that is exactly it. Where humans tend to go awry is when they have that connection, that beautiful exchange happens, remembering that each moment the individual is creating their life, their timeline. So each moment there is the possibility of the frequency changing. But when you come together and you feel that frequency, you feel it, mm -hmm. you feel it and you nurture it and you enjoy it and you bask in it. And that is exactly what you said it is. It is that knowing. It is that knowing that friend that you know, even though she lives in a whole other country, you know this one has been having many experiences very much like that. But it is wise to say that you have chosen the human journey. And if as the creation of the individual's life changes on either side, the frequency, and there is not the Hmm. resonant flexibility that would allow it to redefine, then it is okay for it to be done. It does not mean it has to be a lifetime. If the two are blessed and their journey keeps them in that vibrational resonance and the work is done for the for the growth, the personal growth of the human, humans are not made to stay the same. They are made mm -hmm. to evolve and to grow and awaken. That is why you come forth. Mm -hmm. So when you feel that connection, enjoy that connection, tend to that connection. It needs to be tended to in order for it to be a beautiful, beautiful, moving thing. It isn't this, it is this. It is a beautiful flow of two beautiful souls traveling this path together. Oh, that's so nice. Thank you. And I have intimate experience of what you're saying. I think for mm -hmm. six or eight years, I had a woman who I was best friends with like sisters, like mad relationship. And yes, it had a falling out at the beginning of COVID. And she went, she chose to go her way. It was very painful for me because um, I love pretty deeply. 
but I came to a point of acceptance. And interestingly enough, she's just coming back in my life. Um, little bit of communication. I don't have any expectations or anticipation. I feel very at peace today with what we had, but I know exactly what you're saying. I think it lived its mission for the time. And you had mentioned, um, it was a great example when you said, there is a contract and there's guidance when the contract is made at the soul level before the soul incarnates. And that there are times when uh, one of the members of the soul group will say, you know, I'm going to do something really awful to you. Maybe I, I would rather do anything else in the world because I really love you, but I'll play that part so you have the experience and can learn lessons you want. And so everybody, like a play, you know, chooses their character mm -hmm. and says, I'll go down and do this. So for people who have had that experience where it was uh, rough, beginnings where they did have trauma and misfortune, I'll call it. Um, and they're making their way out. They're finding their way, you know, spiritually working on themselves. But I have noticed a lot of people who come from that space to shift into real ownership of love of self, care of self, you know, that, that there's a real health with self learning doesn't always happen because the trauma still perpetuates. Can you speak to that? And what is possible for somebody to make that final shift and really fully embrace and love themselves like wounds, warts and all? Okay, uh, Kelly's going to talk to this. Is that okay? okay? Because this this has been, I'm very blended right now. That's just the way that it works. But it it's it'll just, I just this is how we'll do this. Every collective who finds their channel, typically has themes that they bring through. And my guide's theme, a great part of it is the relationship between me and me. Mm -hmm. And giving me tools to understand it and to teach it. And when I'm doing my one-to-ones, that is a lot of what I'm teaching. I'm because people have to exactly what you said, Debbie, they have to understand that self-love. I had a beautiful, beautiful 40 something year old woman look at me just recently and say, I don't understand what that means to love myself. What does that mean? And I think a real key in this, and then I'm going to turn it over to the guides, but a real key in this that I didn't quite understand until I talked it through with her, it is almost like a third party relationship. My guides explain the continuum of emotions. And there is a center point in that continuum. This side, you have all of the ups, all of the ups, the joy, the awe, the wonder, and this side with the all the bad stuff, the anger, the depression, the anxiety, all that. There's a spot in the middle that they call neutral. And only two days ago, they said, because up to that point, they had been saying, that is your adult self. That neutral place is your adult self. And all of these other emotions we can think of, this is a theory to just entertain a way of thinking, we can think of as our inner child. So we get the happy fun from our inner child and we get the anxiety and the anger and the grump from our inner child. All of that is that inner child. This bit in here is our adult self. And just recently they said, it's also the perspective of source energy, that neutral perspective. 
that pulling back and looking at what's going on and having no opinion about what it is. Source has no opinion. There is no duality on the other side. There is no good and bad. They, it's all experience. It's all experience. That's the truth. And so they, when we talk about the relationship between me and me, we come at it through our adult self. We can think of it as also the perception or the perspective of source. And we talk to that inner child that is feeling scared or feeling anxious or feeling mad. And we are just like if I were to bring my beautiful little grandbaby up onto my lap, we talk to her and we tell her how precious she is. And I literally, Kelly, literally, I will sit and I will see my little girl and I will say, baby doll, what's going on with you? You seem upset. Why are you upset? Now, we can't do that in the run of a day when we're out at our jobs and stuff. But when you have those little triggers, I'm not talking the catastrophic things. I'm talking that little bit of anxiety when, when you have to walk into a room or the person that's on the phone and you're like, oh, God, you know, and you've got to pick up that phone. Why? They're, your inner child knows why. The inner child holds the answer. And you having that relationship, that nurturing, kind relationship with your inner child will help her to be okay. And if you're out in the world and you start feeling that feeling like, oh God, I'm, I'm starting to not feel okay. You can say, adult Kelly can say to inner Kelly, sweetheart, I can tell you're getting nervous. I want you to go into that safe space, that beautiful, beautiful safe space that's in your heart. And I want you to just stay there and play and be joyful and happy. And I've got this. You don't have to worry. I've got this. We're going to be okay. I got you. Go play and have fun. And there is so much power in that. There is so much power in that. Yes. Turning it over to the appropriate one to deal with things, but also acknowledging what's going on. And I really was fascinated by that part. You said that the inner child has all the answers. So to let she or he express itself. Express. And yeah. And let you know what's, what's happening. What, why they're feeling like that. Exactly. And Debbie, when is the last time I would ask all your listeners to really think about that? When is the last time that somebody said to you, sweetheart, what can I do for you right now that's going to make you feel better? And I am practicing. I need to practice just like everyone else. I'm practicing doing that. When I feel a little overwhelmed, if I'm feeling too tired, if I'm, I will say, Kelly, Colleen, sweetheart, you are tuckered right out. What do you need right now to feel better? And when you ask the question by the very energy, that inner need starts to think, well, gosh, let me think. I need blah, blah, blah. I will say, I will go to get my groceries and I will say to my inner child, sweet, I guess what? I'm going to buy you a surprise. And my inner child goes into this, ooh, yay, what are we going to get? And, and it's just, there's an energy to it. And what is the object of the game, everyone? The object is the frequency of the present moment is creating the timeline that you are on. And I want mine to be full of rainbows and unicorns. I want the awe and the wonder. I want the love and the joy. And when we are, when we are in that beautiful vibration of anticipation, oh, what's coming? What could it be? What could it be? Mm -hmm. then that's bring in the rainbows and the unicorns. Oh, that's lovely. Thank you. Thank you. You're so welcome. I want to shift to talking some about extraterrestrials and contact and rah, all the <laughs> races and the stuff that I love so much. So first, uh, <clears throat> I may put you on the spot, but I feel like it's timely to be on the spot about an answer for this. How soon is extraterrestrial contact? I know there's been contact since the beginning of time with earthlings. I know, I know, and I know our DNA is part alien race. So I understand that's 
with that caveat, I understand all of that clearly, but I mean, really open contact. How soon is that gonna happen with extraterrestrials? The challenging part of that answer is that it already is now. Remember, dear one, there is no time. Every moment that ever has been or ever will be is happening now. So when you say to us, when will it happen? From our perception, it's already there. We know that is not exactly what you are meaning. Yeah. What we would say also to that question is that for the human who is on the evolutionary timeline of the raising of the frequency of the planet, it is not going to be that long. We are bringing people like Kelly, who only a few weeks ago could not have said the words that ETs are part of my guides. She could not have spoken those words. And we have brought her with love and care and gentleness through her fear to the present moment, being able to embrace the truth. And she knows that this is part of her calling mm -hmm. to talk about the relationship that has been going on between her and us for quite a period of time. Wow. It began when the light language came through. Mm -hmm. When the light language when she spoke the light language for the very first time, the words, the English words, so I can speak to my brothers and sisters came through. And it freaked her out and she could not bear to think about it. And it took from last June to only a few weeks ago, maybe, maybe several months, for her to begin to realize the reality of this truth. And in that meantime, we gave her some physical experiences. We showed her some interesting things in the sky. We visited her in a very fun little frolicky way. And, and she was able to see it in her physical world. All of that has helped her because she was able to say, how did she feel when those things happened? Did she feel afraid? No, she did not. And so we would say that when the collective mm -hmm. is um, I can't quite get the words. Give me just a minute. When the accepting, loving frequency raises to the right point, and it will be a positive thing for the majority, that is when the majority will have these kinds of experiences. We have no intention of terrifying the planet, but you certainly, Debbie, in your journey are very aware of how media has been used to control the perception of the masses. But now they have the beautiful access to the internet, which allows your the average person access to all information. And now we can work the magic of the frequency. 
the magic of when you click on that video, how do you feel? Do you feel drawn in or repulsed? And you, if you are listening to your guides, you're going to feel drawn to the right things at the right time. There's no skipping ahead. There is, but it's much less, much less pain-free than if you do it by the nature that it was intended. We know that is not terribly satisfactory. However, you must realize that the frequency of your planet is an ever-moving, ever-changing thing. There is no way to say, even from the perception of linear time, a distance. Thank you. I understand completely. And I'm about to do a talk in a couple of months. I'm flying to Mexico City. And I was asked to speak to the World Congress UFOlogy event. I'm very excited about that. And I decided just to talk about what I, well, I don't know, passionate isn't a great word but I'll use that for want of a better explanation. But I'm very passionate about extraterrestrial races and UFOs and galaxies and cosmos and shamanism. And so I'm gonna speak about all of that. <clears throat> Can you tell me ancient shamanic practices, modern shamanic practices, is there a link between that and our galactic families? Sometimes they're a little sassy, I gotta tell you. They are saying, you know the answer to that. You feel it. You Okay, now they're gonna talk. You feel within your heart the connection. You know there has been a relationship on from the inception of planet Earth are an active relationship between the benevolent beings who were nurturing and coaxing along the human race. And of course, there have been those at every level that have been more open and their frequency more in tune and their gifts more online, so to speak, that allowed them to have those kinds of practices that you speak of. So are you saying that alien races gave the shamans and the indigenous peoples their healing practices and their ability to time travel and go to different realms and dimensions? a big question and I'm trying to make sure I'm not filtering so give me just a minute yeah there has always been a blending of beings from all realms and all dimensions that have worked together for the betterment of the planet. And would we say that these kinds of teachings came from that? Yes we would. Okay, wow. When they answered that, I could see like, they show me pictures. And so I could see like caves and fires and, 
and a definite feeling of like, I, I don't even know how to explain it, but you, because I, I don't know about that. Kelly doesn't know about it, but like the journeys that, that people would take, you know, going into the wilderness and, and finding themselves, that would be when those kinds of events would happen for them. They would, they would perhaps, I see a blending. I see like, It makes sense, I will say, because okay, okay. there are caves okay. that are that are very, very ancient, and they have depictions of things that in those times, according to the history we've been taught, it's impossible. But they do show alien races. They do show spacecraft. And I think I think maybe what you were referring to is a vision quest, because oh. that is something that indigenous people do and aborigines, aborigines um, do a walkabout. So these are all, you know, really important oh, part of their culture. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> but exactly what you said, like to find their spirit animal, to connect with the divine, to find out who mm -hmm. they are, sometimes come back with a name. And, you know, mm -hmm. it's a big shift in their, in their life process. That's feeling very right. That's feeling very right. They're, they're right here. And they also are nudging me to speak about, you know, one might do that kind of a journey with plant medicine and those kinds of tools to help the human let go of their fear and their preconceived ideas and all of that stuff that holds us back from the blending that happens when you can get out of the way. And very much so that this is certainly, certainly a truth. Yeah, absolutely. I thank you so much for saying that. And I've always been very open on this show and in my life. I have done plant medicine. I continue to do plant medicine. And um, it's I find it amazing. And there are ways that I'm guided that I feel like they need access to me through the plants to have me be in that state in order to take me further. Frankly, um, when my mom was about to die, I didn't even know she was going to die. And sorry, I just, oof. I got a call from the plants. That's the feeling to me. Literally, we call her the grandmother and I felt called by the grandmother to come sit with her, even though I hadn't sat with her for a year and a half. And ostensibly, I thought it was about shamanism. I thought I was going to go and get all these amazing downloads about shamanism. But actually, she was preparing me through the whole two-night ceremony. You know, your mom's going to leave. And indeed, I left that ceremony a week and a half later. Everything changed. So I feel like it's very beautiful and benevolent and wise, those mm. plants. And, mm. and it is about getting out of the way for their wisdom, healing. Uh, Come up and sometimes you know you need to yeah, take they do get a little sassy <laughs> sometimes I, it's like i know what they want to say and i'm in my head going come on now guys <laughs> gotta be a little gentle here <laughs> but yeah they can be yeah so what so today we still have the indigenous right god bless them that with all the cruelty they've endured that they're still here and um I think they're way showers right now. I, I hope people are waking up to this. So that's me. What do the indigenous earth civilizations have to teach us right now about their practices regarding the cosmos, about other galactic beings, anything of import? I'm actually feeling almost teary. Give me just a minute. the greatest gift that these peoples have to give is their connection to mother earth humans on their journey tend to stay from the heart chakra and up with their desire to because they can look to the stars and they can imagine and wonder what the important 
biggest piece that they're missing is that when they do not put their energy down into Mother Earth, to the infinity that is Mother Earth, the infinity that is Mother Earth, and all the gifts that will come when we learn, when the human learns to walk in that energetic circuit that is the ultimate connection. When you, in your um, energy field, your energy body is blended with the energy that is traveling up past into the cosmos, beyond the stars, beyond dimensions, your energy is traveling and it is releasing and it is gathering the codes and the frequencies that it needs and it is transforming anything that can be transformed and it loops back into the human, the human's energy field and it's a beautiful infinity sign down into the infinity that is mother earth and the same things happen you are gathering what is needed you are releasing what is no longer serving you and you are transforming what can be transformed and this is happening in all directions at all chakra points and people do not utilize the tool Mm -hmm. And it is an important piece. And the people that you speak of, they know the value of their feet on the ground. They know the value of thumping their heel on Mother Earth, of having their naked foot in the dirt or in the grass upon her. The power that comes from that. They know also to look to the stars and look to Father Sky, and they know that they are the nucleus between the two. And that is what they have to teach. And that is where the power comes from. All that people seek, it is this connection that will facilitate them getting it. Right on. I love that answer. Holy moly. <laughs> I love Jeez. that answer so much. That oh, has wow. so much wisdom in it. And, you know, and something came up for me regarding our earlier conversation. So first of all, I have a new practice and I never was great at meditation or anything like that. But because of the shaman school I went through, I have this practice where I go out in the backyard. I don't know what it'll do in the winter, but right now I go out in the backyard. I put my feet in the ground. And the first thing, I mean, there's many things I do. I open sacred space and so forth. And I have a whole practice that I do. And it is in connection to Pachamamita, which is Mother Earth, Madre Tierra. And I have come to have a relationship with her that I never had before. Mm -hmm. And what I was going to suggest as a bridge to our earlier conversation when I was asking you about uh, how does somebody who has a contract, a soul contract, and has experienced trauma in their life. Maybe they've been through war, maybe who knows, foster homes, maybe they've had terrible parents or siblings, or I don't know. But whatever the trauma was, there it was meant to be. They're here to work it out, to grow, to learn. And I was asking because so often there isn't a thriving, there is not a full transition into self-love, which I'd love to see for everybody. And it occurred to me one of the things I've used is the practice. And I often, when I do my practice, I say, and I'm moved actually emotionally saying this because it's so meaningful to me, but I say to her, you are the greatest mother. You are the great mother. And I'm speaking to mother earth. And I mean that she has never failed to nurture me, to love me, to let me walk on her one more day, to show me her beauty and her abundance and her resilience and her boundaries. And I could go on and on my 
feeling for her. And, and, and so I just want to share that as a way that people listening or watching, if they're in that position and having that trouble transitioning to the self-love, go be alone, put your feet in a safe place where you can, you know, just do your thing, whether it's a park or a backyard, whatever, and allow mother to be there for you and allow that feeling of a real mother, real mother relationship where you're so cared for and seen and adored. Um, I do want to say, because I'm from Maine, so we don't put our feet on the ground all year long. <laughs> just, I just want you to know that it's our intention that I can sit on an upper story and with my intention, embrace Mother Earth. Mm -hmm. So don't, I just want, because there's many people that live where there's snow, you can't put your bare feet in the snow. That's not, that's not going to serve you well. She also said to me, I don't particularly, Kelly doesn't particularly care about wind. It's not my favorite. And so when I channeled her the first time, and she said to talk to me about her, the elements, fire and wind and rain and blah, blah, blah. I, I said, I, cause she, she's in my heart. She's me. I'm her. And she, I said, I don't like the wind. And she said, when you turn your face to the wind and you feel the caress upon your cheeks, think of all that wind has touched. It has touched so much of me that it, it, it's the reason why we love the water. It's the reason we love the ocean. When you put your hand in the ocean, the footprint of that ocean is so big on mother earth. When you turn your face to the sky, to the sky when it's raining and you feel the raindrops on your cheek, that beautiful water has gone into Mother Earth and up to the heavens and down again. That's why it feels the way it does to us. It's a kiss and a hug from Mother Earth. Yeah. It is just, it's the most wonderful, wonderful thing. So beautiful. Yeah. I wish, one thing that I will say is that my guides have really explained about the whole inner child work thing and I know people hate hearing it but I have to say my truth as often as I have to say it it is the truth that humans are programmed by the time they're about seven years old and they spend the rest of their lives running on their subconscious programming and we, are, we work on our subconscious programming like 90% of the time. This is psychology. It's not spirituality. It's the psychology truth. But what I can tell you is that when you do that work of creating that relationship with that inner child, talking to your inner child, letting your inner child talk and express themselves, and you love that inner child, you are creating within yourself all your needs being met. And when you are meeting all of your needs with that connection to Mother Earth and the connection to the all, the cosmos, and you are loving yourself in this moment, that will well up and overflow into your life. They have me say all the time, they have me, they have me put my hands up when I'm talking with people and say, all the kindness and the gentleness and the love and the care that you do for everyone in the world, turn those hands onto yourself and do it for you because you love you and you're worth loving, you're worthy. And that is, you do it, how do you do, how do you eat an elephant? One bite at a time, little bit at a time, huh? I said, I never eat elephants. I never <laughs> but if you was going to, you wouldn't <laughs> eat them in one big bite. You would eat one little bite at a time. That's if it was an ice cream elephant, I would eat it. Okay, We're, we'll make him an ice cream elephant. Right on. Okay, my birthday's in June. Um, thank you for that. Thank you so much. That was super beautiful, the putting it back. Mm -hmm. And it's very true. Um, this kindness and this love that we we have. I, I think often people who go through trauma tend to be some of the most caring, amazing people. 
Oh, they, yes. Such big hearts, I have noticed. To the world, to the world. Not often to themselves. But not often, they, they because of that programming that said to them, my value and my worth is in what I do. And, and God, I'm going to use the word God, which the all the call, whatever you want to call it, the value is in what you be. It mm -hmm. isn't what you do. You can do anything. They don't give a flying, you know what, about what people do. It's how do you be while you do it? I I battled with I battled with my drinking because I'm a Baptist. I was a bap, raised Baptist, and drinking is a sin. And I drink every damn day. And I have battled the guilt of cocktail hour my whole friggin' life. But it didn't make me stop. But I did battle the guilt. And so I actually had my in one of my sessions with my Monday group. I I said ask about drinking. I want when I'm really altered and I'm not. In Kelly had, I want to, you to ask about the drinking. And they said, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. If you are who you are, wow. if you are who you choose to be. I had someone talk to me about smoking pot. They feel guilty about smoking too much pot. I said, are you who you are when you smoke pot? Are you your authentic self when you smoke? I'm my authentic self when I drink. I might be a little mouthier. But I don't, but I don't change, but I don't fill hour with Kelly. <laughs> I wish but, I was closer. I know, right? Cocktails with Kelly. That ought to be something we do. Um, but it doesn't change who I am. I love just as big. I am just as kind. But now I do know people who are not. I know people who, when they drink alcohol, turn into someone they don't like anymore. And certainly someone I don't like anymore. So yeah, then for that person, don't drink. It's not a good thing for you unless you want to be an ass. You want to be an ass, drink. Simple, about as simple as that. Yeah, you know, that's such a good point. Um, not the ass part. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> Doing something and just like, how are you being while you do it? It's very interesting, especially in regards to food. I mean, we live in a time where don't do this. Oh, that's they don't terrible really oh do this it's actually wonderful don't this that and to the point where people like really who knows but i do have a lot of vegan friends and i some of them have incredibly strong points of view no alcohol no coffee no dairy i'm sure obviously no meat and so just plant-based and i think that's beautiful it's actually when yeah. i've eaten vegan food many times in my life and when it's prepared well boy is it freaking delicious so i shift in and out of everything but i've always thought it was very interesting because there is a something something attached to that why these substances some of them are bad and um oh turn your television on and you'll figure that out who's making money on what I mean, I, I hate to sound jaded, but an awful lot of, of the, the this and then the that and then the this and then the that is, is driven by media. It's so it's true. It's and marketing. By, marketing. Marketing, exactly. It's, it's driven by marketing. My yeah. God. Oh, my. Oh, my God. We could go down a whole rabbit hole with that. Yeah. But so what I would say to that for anyone who is struggling I would say, why can this person eat at McDonald's every day of their life, smoke cigars and drink every day and live to be 102? And this one, diet, exercise, never take a, a whatever. But this one is joyful, lives to be 102. This one's a bitch of misery. She dies at 70. Yeah. You know, I mean, that's the that is the absolute truth. I have seen that in my own life. Yeah. And, and so you always so see that when when the newspaper talks about so and so, you know, 100 celebrating our 103rd birthday and like, so what do you do? And she, and she says, well, I have a cigarette every day. I have a <laughs> He's like, damn, yeah. OK, you had That's a right. fun life. That's, That's right. Cool. Exactly. So getting back to the the shamans and the extraterrestrials and all of that. Are there actually time traveling shamans who in historically or today have access real connection communication with extraterrestrials 
of the time traveling shamans who have I have no idea. Let's ask. <laughs> The answer to the question lies within the concept of dimensions and time. So the answer is yes, absolutely. There are those who have learned to move between dimensions in a conscious way and can bring back knowings and Gifts. I think that is it. Okay. Are there alien races that are important for humanity to know about at this time? And what which alien races are going to play an important part in our connection with them in the cosmos right now? We would say to judge all interactions by how it feels. We have explained to this one that you would not want humans to be judged by the few who do what you would deem the inappropriate things. So when you say, as a whole, we say that in all races, mm -mm, no, not all, in most realms, dimensions, and races, there is the continuum of benevolence in the same way that there is with humans. So when you ask which are important, it brings up a very good thing to note. What is the message? What does it feel like? These are the same guidances that we would give you for all discernment. You have been given the ability to know innately if something is right for you in any given moment. If it feels like the right thing, then that is the right thing for that moment. And so interactions and experiences judge them by how you feel okay and you tell me please i would like to know a little bit about the lion people meaning the lyrans do they still exist are there still lion people lyran people in certain realms and dimensions and timelines, yes. They do still exist. Again, it is that bugger, shall we say, of the understanding of time and multi-dimensional beingness that is at the root of the answer to your question. How can we tell who they are and if we're interacting? Like, is it possible for me to speak with a Lyran or connect and be with a Lyran or many of them? If 
one were to ask and one was within the vibrational frequency of that, then the answer would be that yes, you could to whatever degree was deemed the, for the highest good. Am I in the frequency? Am I in the position where I could do that? We would say to you to ask and see what happens. That is only for you to discern because from this moment in time to the time that you would sit in your contemplative state, there is the opportunity for a mulling and a thinking about and an opening in such a way that perhaps that would be possible or it could even go the other direction. So it is not really uh, a um, quantitative thing. It would be a, each one of you have the ability to channel, but yet not all do. So it is a hard question to ask and or answer because the it depends on so many things. But is it possible? Yes, it is. Excellent. Okay. And can you, the guides, the angels, can they give us practical advice on living our best life? What would that be? Acknowledge your chakra system, your energetic beingness. Do the work that it requires to be balanced and clean and healthy. We've given much of this kind of information through Kelly, and she has it on her YouTube channel. And work on your relationship and the balance between Mother Earth and all the other things that your mind goes to. There needs to be a balance in that. And in any given moment, breathe into your heart chakra. Breathe deep within, creating space. And know that the vibration of the present moment is all you have any control over. And when you tend to it, you will have the life you desire. Thank you so much for being with us today. I'm very grateful for the connection and all of what you imparted to us. It was really magnificent. You put me through the paces of <laughs> them. Welcome back. My dear, awesome. dare to dream. Oh. What do you next dare to dream? I dream about all kinds of stuff. I, I am open to whatever they have in store for me. They know my intention. My greatest intention for this lifetime is to live out the rest of my life happily married to Michael Bowker. And they know that. And so with that said, I want to shine my light as brightly for as many as I possibly can. And I'm open to whatever falls in my lap. And you've already seen, you're a perfect example, Deb, that things do, they bring, they bring things into my experience. And I'm just along for the ride. <laughs> that is a joyful a, ride, though. <laughs> a joy-filled, joyful ride. Yeah. And I know that people can find you at the website presentmomentmagic.com. 
as.me. So present moment magic dot as dot me. Any other place where they can find you or should reach out? That that is not well, it is a website, but it isn't like what people would think of as a website. That is the link to if you want to schedule a meeting with me. A session. I I don't actually have an a website. I have a Facebook page, Kelly Bowker channel. I have my Facebook, Kelly Newt Bowker, you said at the beginning. My email is kellybowker7 at gmail.com. If there is a time on my scheduling app that's not available and you can't make it work with what's available, reach out to me and I'll try to be flexible. Yeah, email me, private message me. You can even phone, you can even phone me. I had a, a lovely woman call and I answered. I was outside on my deck. I answered, hello. I thought she was going to have a heart attack. You answer your own phone. And I'm like, I'm just a country girl from Lee, Maine. Cause I answer my own phone. <laughs> so, so that was pretty cool. That was pretty fun. Anything here at the end you want to say to the listeners and to the watchers? Don't count yourself out because you're getting to any particular age. I could not have dreamed this reality for myself. We cannot dream a reality that is as magnificent and wonderful as what the universe will dream for us. Be open and know that age does not matter because I'm a the poster child, 61 years old, and this is all just barely happening for me. And it's awesome. So it's a glorious life and you are loved so much, completely just as you are right now. Yeah. Kelly, thank you so much for coming on the show today. This has been exquisite. It has been an absolute pleasure, Debbie. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah, anytime. <laughs> okay. I, okay. <laughs> That could be a thing. That could be a thing. Today's show with this quote. Through channeled readings, we unlock the whispers of the universe. In mediumship, we bridge worlds and hearts. With spiritual mentoring, we guide souls toward their own luminous path. And in the dance of light language blessings, we speak the language of the cosmos, weaving threads of healing and understanding. Subscribe to this number one transformation conversation, the weekly Dare to Dream mm -hmm. podcast with Debbie Dashinger. Leave a comment and share. I love reading your feedback. Next week, I have a pro golfer on the show who's a magician and a metaphysician. Bob Young will be here. He is the brother of musician Neil Young. Bob is a pro golfer and he metaphysically works magic for real on the golf course so when he hits a ball it goes exactly where he wants it to go thank you so much for joining us today on the show it has been as always a pleasure i hope you got tons out of it subscribe like and share this with somebody who this will be meaningful to